here. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. Um, I, I want to first apologize. This video was supposed to be out last week for us, and I know many of you were super excited to hear from my dear friend and business partner, Sheila Christensen, last week, but I was under the weather, and we tried, and we tried, and we tried again, and finally we just had to say it was better to wait until this week and put out a video where I actually had a voice versus one where I was squeaking off camera. So, with that, I am super excited to bring you today's session. Um, it is one of my favorite topics of discussion, and that is where Sheila gets to share with us all of her thoughts and process and all the secret sauce that goes into making all of our very popular mystery quilts. Um, so I'm gonna ask her a ton of questions. Um, if you guys have questions, definitely put it in the comments and our team will get them to her and make sure they get answered. I do wanna make sure everyone hangs out until the end because it wouldn't be a Cotton Cuts video if we didn't give away fabric. And so we're going to be talking about the powdered collection, which features these lovelies from Tula Pink. I will show each one of them at the end and we'll give away a bundle. So with all of that, um, hi Sheila, how are you? Hi Kim, I'm very well, thank you. Pretty Good. warm today. I know, I was going to say, it's December and you're in like a tank top. I know. I, am. I I'm, was debating. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so I was debating sitting out on the patio to do the video. It's oh my gosh, hot, drinking, hot! Drinking an iced beverage, I'm sure, because that's what you do in New Zealand at this time of year. <laughs> so, for those that don't know, Sheila is actually based in New Zealand, and so she has been working with us from abroad this whole time. And so, we have many conversations like this late in the day for me, early in the day for her. All right, so Sheila, my very first question for you is introduce yourself to us. Tell us the non-mystery quilt side of you. How, give us your journey, your background, and how you got into quilting. Okay, well, um, I was born in England, so um, you can probably tell from my voice, because I think I have some Kiwi accent to it after 20 years here now, but definitely English. <laughs> yep, and yep. um so I grew up there and we moved to the States. See, my glasses are fogging up because it's so hot. <laughs> um, we moved to the States in 95 because we had an electronics business. Went and lived in North Carolina for a couple of years and then Florida. Then we moved back to England and then we moved out here to New Zealand in 20, uh, 2000 and, hmm, I'm trying to remember now, two. 2002. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. And what brought, <laughs> so, you, yeah, what brought you to New Zealand? So we had a guy who worked, who was a Kiwi, a New Zealander, who worked for us um, virtually. He did our technical support. And um, while we were in the, the US, he was working in the UK. And then he and his wife moved back to New Zealand and sent us a book of pictures of New Zealand. And we just went, that's pretty. That's a nice place. Let's go and have a look at that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, so we came out here to work on the same same sort of business, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, gone from there. And then, when I found myself on my own, I was wandering around down the town and um, saw a sign saying, "Come and make a, a table runner." this Saturday and I thought well he's got the kids this Saturday so I'm going to uh, I'll go and do that that sounds like a bit of fun and um, it was quilting I'd never heard of quilting as a hobby before so 2008 I started quilting and um, kind of got hooked straight away and didn't stop and just went for it <laughs> so. so how long after you started quilting did you buy your quilt shop three years uh, yeah, so I took all the classes I could take. I was just addicted to it. I did go back to England for a little while. I was a teacher, primary school teacher, and um, went back to England to do some supply teaching for a while. And um, while I was there, I had to come back to New Zealand for the for the holidays because I missed it and took went to a class and overheard that the quilt shop was for sale. So I went, hmm, I might be interested in that. <laughs> so that was about July and by January of 2011, there I was with my quilt shop. 
Fantastic. So, it's just you know, one of the parts I love about your story is is you're just like I was in the United Kingdom and then I was in Wales and then I was in the United <laughs> States and then I was here and then I was and you just like I just decided to buy a quilt shop you know eighteen thousand miles away from where I live like to, to me that just it's it's just a it's just a very cool concept and I think it tells us a lot about you that it's like you can live anywhere and do anything and I think that's fascinating. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Sometimes it's a little bit frantic, but you know, that's the way it was. Well, my son was at uni over here as well. So, so there were two draw cards to come back. <laughs> Fantastic. So, okay. So you opened your quilt or so you bought the quilt shop Yes. and you were running it. And then this idea for this program came to you. Tell us about that. Yeah. So I decided that we needed a type of block of the month. And I just thought that um, it, I wanted to do something different. I'd always been interested in the idea of mystery quilts, but I didn't really know how they worked. Um, and then things come to me in the middle of the night. So I wake up with this idea and then I just have to run with it. So, <laughs> so I don't know what that's oh. like at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, I decided to do a mystery quilt, but instead of people having to cut their own fabric because I knew about die cutters and stuff like that and I've been getting into that so oh well we could cut the pieces for them they might like that and um, it took off straight away it was really successful so um, we just carried on doing them every year fantastic and then you found me and now we've been bringing it to the rest of the world so yeah it's, then I found it you. fantastic and, yeah <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, I want folks to understand kind of what is the, the timeline that goes into this? Because I know some people look at it and they think, oh, surely we're like designing it and then shipping it the next month. And so um, yeah. using So Sweet as an example. So So Sweet, yeah. Clue One ships to our customers the beginning of February. Mm -hmm. When did you start working on the design for the So Sweet mystery quilt? Um, actually fully working on it probably about May. Um so i have ideas mm -hmm. rumbling around in my head i have my you have a whole you have a whole notebook I, of ideas yes notebook and i scribble and then when i'm about ready and thinking yeah i think that design's quite nice i'll work with that um i then need to put it into the computer so it takes a while to take that so put it into the computer and fiddle around with it some more so that it works and then I have to try out some colorways and see mm -hmm. whether it actually, because I have quite had quite a few, you know, you can get a design and put it in the computer. And when you start putting fabric in, you go, oh, no, this just doesn't work. <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, so um, you have to, you have to balance the fabrics, but then yeah. also what's compatible with a die cutter. Yeah. Right. You can't you don't have infinite constraints because we're not cutting these with rotary cutters. We're cutting them with dies. So you have to have yeah. a design that fits the die cutter. But then when you put the fabrics in, it has to also work as well. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. of course, we're also limited on the number of fabrics. Mm -hmm. So um, we have to do something. In, and, you know, <laughs> we've yes. experimented a bit over time. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> Another constraint is in terms of your operations. So I have to try not to go overboard with the number of different shapes mm -hmm. and, um, you know, yeah, looking at the number yeah. of fabrics. Um, we've got an ideal number of fabrics and ideal sizes mm -hmm. of shapes and that sort of thing. So, yeah, there are a few constraints there. <laughs> sure. So you start in May. You said in May. Yeah. So here we are in December. So seven months later, right? So you started in May with the final design, put it in the computer, and then you start testing some fabrics. And then mm -hmm. what happens? So you've got a design and you have a whole bunch of colorways. Yeah. So, well, yeah, we don't jump to a whole bunch of colorways. <laughs> Wait, we don't? <laughs> so we, we try a few, right. make sure it's going to work. Mm -hmm. um, and the design goes through a few more iterations probably before we get there. Then I have to go and see, look up what's going to be available at the right time. Um, right. So we can't just use any old fabrics. We have to find ones that are going to be ready, mm -hmm. um, which has been a challenge, as you know. In the last right. Yeah, because for we we ideally like to take fabric for so sweet that ships to us in October November, 
Yeah. Um, and so that's that's kind of the things you're looking for is fabric releases that come out in October, November. Yeah. This year, it has been fabrics that ship November, December, and sometimes January. But yes. typically, you want an October to November release. Yeah. So, yeah. Th so that's because that's a question we get is, well, why can't you feature this design? Why can't you feature this design? And it's because it has to hit kind of this nice ship window for us when we're starting up a mystery. So there is an additional yeah. constraint there as well. Yes. Yeah. So then I go through and do lots of different options and um, send those through to you and see what you like and also what you can get hold of. So you know best about yes. how you narrow down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, so for everyone, so Sheila sends, gosh, probably like 20 designs over and we take a look at them here and we're kind of balancing out what we know our detectives want, um, what our detectives have asked for. And then it comes down to what can we purchase? And so for some of them, um, our manufacturers have told us you get one order and one order only, and that won't work for us because we know that if it's super popular, we have wait lists and we want to add more people. And so we try to balance fabric we can get more of with things that people like. And so that's why, um, you know, it, it, it's a process. And I think um, by the time everything is said and done, Sheila auditions probably about 35 different colorways <laughs> to get to the 14 that we eventually, cotton cuts eventually will show to our customers. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's a to and fro process, isn't it? So, um, yes. you know, oh, this, oh, I can't get hold of this. Can you try this range? And and we just go through that process. Mm -hmm. So um, once we've finalized our colorways, and then that means that my design is virtually finalized, um, mm -hmm. then I have to tell Kim what she needs to cut. Yeah. So yeah. I have to figure out all the cutting lists and not just what to cut, but also what to send month by month. So that's mm -hmm. where I have to then work out what the clues are going to be for each month and mm -hmm from that what pieces people are going to need um, and then we're ready to start writing some instructions yes and i think that's i think that's one of the the beautiful things that that sheila that you've been able to really master over the years is once you have a design how do you break it up into 10 equal installments right because we don't want people to have a really big month and then a really slow month we want to kind of keep it even and we want to keep the complexity kind of the same each month we don't want something that's really hard or too simple and you're really good at so like the design behind me how do you take this into a manageable piece that someone could set aside and then come back to in 10 months and put it together and how can you help us you know, make it as efficient as possible because we don't want to cut out a single triangle at a time. And so that is all kind of the magic process that Sheila has been able to really hone and master is it's not just the design and the colorways, but it's how do you make it a an enjoyable 10 month program? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, and I look at various ways of splitting it up and you know, it's like you say, it's those factors that you take into account. It's like, oh no, that's too much for one month or, um, you know, there's, that's too many different pieces in a month. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah. And then, then I have my plan. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> so yeah. Perfect. All right. So how do you pick the colorway themes each time we do a mystery? Okay. Well, we've, we've started doing that a lot together. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. so often I might have an idea of, oh, it reminds me of or, you know, it makes me think about like Cosmos was, oh, it's kind of like a galaxy. So, mm -hmm. so then we start sort of toing and froing about, um, or oh, in that case, what could we use for names? Right. Um, right. So Sparkle and Shine was like a jewel. And so mm -hmm. we came up with a list of jewels and stones, precious stones. Mm -hmm. um, Cosmos was names of female astronaut, uh, female astronomers. Astronomers, yes. Yeah. And um, I think so sweet. <laughs> that was definitely a, that was definitely yeah. a Kim idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, you wanted to do something dessert, donut toppings, and then I just yeah. ran with it. And yeah, yeah, and and Dominic actually named these colorways. My my nine year old son. Yeah. And it's, so it's definitely a collaborative process. It's what does the design remind you of? Name of the rose very rose-like and so all those colorways were different rose names which is fantastic and and it's interesting that um you know given the international nature of what we do there's a whole process to make sure that we're picking names that are universally recognized 
um, that we're also picking names that aren't easily confusable. And so it's, it is, and is it a name we've used before? At this point, we're literally like, have we named a colorway this quote before? <laughs> we need to make sure that we haven't done that because that could happen yeah. at this point. Yeah. So yeah. yes. As we get more and more, then um, we, we're going down different tracks and everything. Yes. So, yeah. And so yeah. I think with that said, if anyone has any suggestions for future themes, by all means, put those in the comments. We're taking a look at them and we'll, 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 we'll definitely use ideas as they come. Yeah. Um, so Sheila, what are you working on now? So tell us like kind of what's in your so, hopper? What are you working on? Yep. Yeah, so I have the July idea in my computer now. Um, I'm trying it out with a few uh, first colorways. Mm -hmm. And once I've done that, I'll be looking to see what's going to be arriving at the right time and um, getting some more colorways churned out. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm working on that. Um, then also the instructions for So Sweet mm -hmm. to make sure that everybody's got all the instructions. Um, and then Olympia we're working on, but we're more or less finished with instructions for Olympia now. Yeah. And our testers are making the example quilts. They're assembling them right now as we speak. Right. I think that's I think that's something as well that, that needs to be appreciated is that you know everyone is so excited about so sweet and in the middle of Olympia. So our team is three to four months ahead of that, right? So for us, like mm -hmm. Olympia is about to be, we're about to be done with that, right? We're kick, we're packing up eight and nine and getting 10 ready to go. And we're into so sweet. And then as soon as we do so sweet, the next mystery is right there. Right. And so it's, it's one of those where all this like balancing of multiple mysteries is something that it keeps, it energizes me because it's super complex, but it can be ultimately confusing at a time. Like in two months, we're still going to be talking about Olympia and my team's going to be like, wait, what colorway was that? Like, it's, it's just, it's, yeah. we have to think forward because of what we're doing. And so I, I think it's fun. I think it keeps it exciting. It does. And the other thing that I love about it is, um, it makes me keep on top of all the new fabrics that are coming out and yes. that's always really exciting to go and have a look and go on the manufacturer's website. So there's lots of various ways that I get hold of the information and, um, mm -hmm. you know, that's something that I work on over time to make it a bit simpler, but um, very easy for some manufacturers and not so easy for others. <laughs> yes. And I think that's, I think that's, that's what makes the kind of international piece work is you have access to so much information that we do that you can you can really kind of collect all that and it's it's universal um mm -hmm. you know we do have some situations where i can get fabric but they can't get it in the united kingdom or you can't get it in new zealand and so there is a little bit of nuance there but universally if, if i can get a collection you can also get it as well and so it, it makes it a truly global project for the yeah. folks that are still that are still detectives in your shop versus those that are in the united kingdom yeah and it makes me start planning possibly quite early sometimes because our orders have to be placed really early. Right, right, right. So right. if I want something that's going to arrive in October, I'll be ordering it in March or April probably. Yes. So, yeah, or even yeah. earlier. Same, same with us as well. We are we are ordering yeah. like six months ahead of time. Yeah. Okay, so I am going to end us here. I know that we are going to be doing another video in a couple weeks. So if you have a burning question for Sheila or for me on this whole process and how we develop the mystery quilt, put it in the comments. Um, I think in two weeks, we're going to be just kind of interviewing each other and asking each other fun questions and kind of a get to know you fashion. So we can definitely put questions in there. Um, Sheila, is there anything else before we jump to the pretty fabrics that I'm going to show? Oh, those fabrics are so gorgeous. Yes. <laughs> okay, so we're no, going to be giving away so. So, we're yeah. going to be giving away this lovely bundle of fabrics here. And so I am going to um change the view that we're recording and see if we can make it bigger. Um let's see here. Sheila, can you maybe mute yourself and see if we can figure out how to record me? Let's see here. Let's see. Hold on, technical difficulties, everyone. <laughs> We're gonna see if we can make me the speaker here so you guys can see these because I wanna make sure that everyone 
can see it. Okay, I, I don't think we can, Sheila, you can come back and we'll just have folks zoom in on their video. Okay, so the first fabric I wanna show you is, um, so this is powdered, I apologize. This is the powdered donut collection. This is Daydreamer by Tula Pink. It just hit shelves um, about a month ago. And so we have a mystery collection. This is one of the fabrics inside of it. It is a beautiful pink geometric, lovely print. Um, anytime we do a Tula collection, it is super important that we put solids in place because her fabrics are so bright. Um, it can be overwhelming if you put them all together. So the first solid we have is this lovely teal, um, followed very quickly by a soft peach. These are to give your eyes um, fabrics to rest on in the design. If Sheila was to pick six prints that were all Tula, it would be chaos on a quilt. And we definitely want to make sure that you see design and definition. Then this is one of my all-time favorite prints. Um, it's the Scarlet Macaws. This one has a beautiful soft teal background that is going to match very well with that solid. We also have this Periwinkle, I will call it, um, macaw print as well. These prints are going to die cut up super fantastically. You're going to get some of the wings, some of the background, some of the tail feathers. It is going to add a lot of fun little pops of color and dimension to this colorway. And then this fabric. I think I own this fabric in every colorway. It's the little fruits. And so this is again, one that'll add a pop of surprise and whimsy to the quilt, which is very much in line with Tula Pink and her aesthetic and how it works. And so what we have is we have a half yard bundle of this collection. It is also displayed lovingly behind me here. Um, it is powdered. Um, it is close to selling out. So if you do like this colorway, I strongly recommend going onto the website and taking a look at it. But in order to be entered to win this half yard bundle, we're gonna ask everyone to go into the comments on this video and tell us, um, the collection's called Daydreamer. If you are in a situation and your mind is daydreaming off, what are you daydreaming about? Give us a sentence or two, tell us what you you like to daydream about when you have the opportunity to free think and we would love to hear about it. Sheila, did I miss anything? Is there anything else? I don't think so. Okay. I'm very excited. Awesome. <laughs> right, I want well, to win those fabrics. <laughs> I might know, know someone. Shop, you know. I might know someone who could make you some. No. <laughs> uh, fantastic! Thank you so much, Sheila. You go and enjoy some lovely weather today. I think. Lovely. I think you. I think you more than deserved it. Thank you, Kim. It's All been right. lovely to chat with you, and we'll chat again soon. You got it. Thanks, everyone.